Is Richard I still a good commander to invest in in Rise of Kingdoms or use if you are in the late game? In this video, we're going to talk about the things that have impacted Richard I's effectiveness on the battlefield and whether or not he's still worth it. Hello my friends and welcome back in this detailed commander guide. We're going to talk about Richard I, who was once the King of Kings, and now, well, maybe not so much. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing the subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. We've been doing a ton of commander guides to help you figure out which ones are the best, and we are also a sponsored creator in Rise of Kingdoms. My friends, let's go with the following agenda, and of course, timestamps will be in the description so you can jump to whatever part you want. First, we're going to talk about what's changed in 2020 that has impacted the effectiveness of Richard I. Then we're going to review the skills and what we've learned about these skills and their applicability on the battlefield, important talent changes that we would recommend to be more effective as you use this commander, when you unlock and how that will impact your investment, and a few new pairings that have come out since we ultimately originally had done a review of this commander. Let's start with what has changed in 2020, because the answer is a lot has changed in 2020. First and foremost, our understanding of how the game works has evolved a lot. Richard I's active skill does a heal, and while that sounds really awesome, he's one of the only commanders to do a heal, there is a general consensus that folks have come to now understand and be able to cleanly articulate, and I would summarize it as follows, and this is really the downside of healing. If you are defending a structure, like a flag, or your city, or whatever, um, healing might seem like a cool idea, until you realize that you can get the same sort of effect just by putting more troops into the flag, or more troops reinforcing somebody's city. It is really not a good effect for defending structures. In fact, I would argue it is terrible for defending structures because you could have got that same effect just by putting more troops in, right? You could have just put another march into the rally, and although you can only have one march in a rally at a time, you could have somebody leave the alliance, reapply, and then rejoin the rally. There are a million ways without having an active skill to get the effect of more troops into the fight. And for that reason, we've learned that Richard I's active skill is honest to goodness horrendous in most garrison situations, with the one exception of Ark of Osiris, where he has reigned king for a very, very long time. Why is that? Healing, specifically being able to stall the duration of a fight, is amazing in Ark of Osiris, where you want to hold the structure for as long as you can to get as many points as you can, and you can't just walk more marches in. It's it's time-consuming. You can't be ported next to most structures you're reinforcing. In that situation, the healing is really good. But here's what else is, that has really changed in 2020 that is a problem for Richard I, which is that there are now many counters to healing in Rise of Kingdoms. Uh, let's review some of those counters really quickly. Saladin, when expertise, will reduce healing effectiveness by 50% for five seconds, which is a big deal. Then they released Alexander the Great, who is going to do a 30% healing effect reduction, also for five seconds, which is a big deal. And then, as if all of that wasn't enough, the introduction of Ramses into Rise of Kingdoms with his expertise skill cuts off all healing for a two-second window after he's used an active skill. Richard I is fully, solidly countered in many of his applications. Many of his applications. Um, with little exception, I would argue that the healing on Richard I is not nearly what it once was because in 2020, there simply are too many ways to cut the healing effectiveness of Richard. Now, where is that not exactly true? In the very early game of Rise of Kingdoms, you won't have Saladin, Alexander the Great, or certainly Ramses running around in those kingdoms. You have a lot more time. But here's the TLDR. Why invest in a commander whose 
value over time is going to go down. When you could invest in a commander whose value over time seems to only go up, and that is YSG. Man, this commander is amazing. If you're picking one, go here, not here. Now, with all that said, Richard I does still have a lot of value. Let's just review the skills, and this will highlight why Richard I is still very exceptional for a number of reasons. First and foremost, the active skill does hit an upwards of five targets, and that is a lot of targets to debuff. And that debuff reduces the damage they deal by 30%. Damage reduction effects are very, very powerful. I would argue that's better than an attack reduction. And so a damage reduction of 30% is a meaningful debuff to apply to a large group. In addition, it reduces the march speed of the targets by 50, 15%, and that is very solid. The second skill also doesn't care about the troop type, and this is noteworthy. Uh, it reduces the damage taken by 15%, and that is mind-blowingly effective on the battlefield, which is why he's still pretty good. And in addition, bonus to counterattack damage of 10% is really good. Nice bit of anti-swarm technology there. You're going to do counterattacks back to anyone who's hitting you. Now, I want to point out the fact that the first two skills, neither of them care about a unit type, because if you could put this commander with just about anybody and be effective, that's pretty meaningful, right? Like, you can max the first two skills, that is less than half the amount of sculptures it would take to expertise him, and it is going to give you a lot of effectiveness on the battlefield. The third skill at base level is 10% of infantry stats, at max is 30%, and the last skill is increasing healing effectiveness by an upwards of 30%, which is good, but honestly not all that important. So you could take a 5-5-1-1 Richard and pair him with a lot of different commanders and get a ton of value, one of many reasons that Richard is still extremely powerful. And in 2020, it is these skills over here that make him truly exceptional in game modes, even today, even in old kingdoms, for Sunset Canyon, uh, and even in the battles for the Altar of Darkness and Ancient Ruins, he's just got a ton of staying power with these first two skills. Now, the Expertise skill is going to reduce all damage taken by an additional 5%, which is just gangbuster. Uh, he also increases the damage dealt to Cavalry by 2%, honestly not all that noteworthy, uh, and in addition has a 5 second 50% slow that he can do once every 10 seconds, which is pretty solid. That does instantly apply when you hit a target, which is a part of the reason why he's pretty compelling for those Altar of Darkness and Ancient Ruins fights. The only thing he's really missing in that regard is the march speed to get away. Pair him with Alexander the Great, however, and you're in a really great place. Now, for kingdoms that are very, very old, however, I'm touting how effective Richard I is at the Altar of Darkness and Ancient Ruins. For kingdoms that are very, very old, I do think that the prevalence of Ramses is only going to go up. I would be astonished if Richard I still has meaningful use in Season 5 of Kingdom vs. Kingdom, because I personally will be countering the heck out of that with a commander like Ramses with Esong and be having a blast on the battlefield. I mean, you really melt a Richard that can't heal. It is astonishing how painful that ultimately is. And I think that even could be better than Attila Takeda, who have been savage on the battlefield, because they will just melt these Richards with the Ramses. So I think that by the time Season 5 of KVK comes around, this commander will have lost an unbelievable amount of his value, even though in Canyon, he'll still hold some weight. Let's get a quick look at some of the talent builds that we've been using, because this has definitely changed since we first started using this commander. First and foremost, here is my Canyon build. This is my Sunset Canyon build. I've gone in all the way up to Desperate Elegy in the defense tree to give a little bit of boost when the march gets low. I am getting the extra Rage Gen from Undying Fury. I pick up Strong of Body because health is arguably the best stat in Rise of Kingdoms. Card up in the top if you haven't seen my video where I prove this. And in addition, I do get Hold the Line to further reduce damage taken because that is just so gosh darn powerful. Now, I have avoided picking up Iron Spear simply because there's not all that much cavalry in Sunset Canyon. This is a build I've used in the open field. However, if you were to tweak this specifically for open field, 
I would get rid of Desperate Elegy because you should never let yourself get this low on health, and instead put those points into Iron Spear, start to make your way over to March Speed, and you could make an argument for dropping even more points, such as Testudo Formation and the Defense of All Troops, possibly even Balance to go and get more March Speed, like Fleet of Foot and the March Speed right over there in the unmarked spots. Now, if we're talking about defending for Ark of Osiris, in the early game in Rise of Kingdoms, before all the counters to healing have come out, I think you'll find that this build is truly astonishingly effective. Um, the talents all the way over here may be above and beyond what you need, simply because in the early game, maybe people won't be swarming the garrisons, but by the time you get to Season 2 of KVK, that will be a more prevalent activity, and you could make a really clean argument for Know Thy Enemy having a lot of value. If you were in the super early game, however, and you wanted to abandon those Know Thy Enemy points, which give just a huge amount of damage taken reduction when you're getting swarmed, I would instead drop those points into Iron Spear, uh, Undying Fury, Double-Headed Axe, Call of the Pack, and make your way up to Strong of Body. It's worth noting that this does have six points remaining of Flex over here, and if I were to use this exact build, I would drop those extra six points into Undying Fury for the extra Rage Gen, because that does really make a big difference to generate lots of Rage. I really cannot say that I would recommend using Richard I for defending your city specifically, that is because Richard I is going to heal troops, bring them back into the fight, and then those there's more and more opportunity for those troops to ultimately make their way, their way to your hospital, and then your hospital can overflow, which prevents you from healing between times that your city is hit. So if you are sort of online watching what's happening, you really would want to be able to heal down your hospital between every time that your city is hit. Note that you cannot heal troops in your hospital while your city is being hit, but you can speed up troops that have already been queued up to heal while your city is being hit, and those will rejoin the fight. Uh, card up in the top for a very, very, very old video where I did that. My city was getting rallied. I had like 20 to 30 million power. I was getting hit by T5. It was a grand all time. Uh, so all of that said, I would recommend this build in Osiris and this build over here in Canyon and a variant of this build for the open field to get a little bit more march speed so that you're more uh, able to chase down opponents in the battlefield and do what you need to do. Let's get a quick look at when you unlock this commander, and thank you again to Stormy Reigns from 1206 for putting together this infographic. This is also linked in the description of the video in my Discord server. You'll find this and many other helpful infographics that Stormy and others have put together. Um, you'll see here that Richard I becomes available from the Wheel of Fortune about 38 days into your kingdom's age. This is going to vary a little bit, however, so keep that in mind. He'll show up three times on the Wheel of Fortune. I do think it is absolutely worth unlocking this commander. And I think if you are free to play, you could use him as a 5-1-1-1 commander after unlocking from the Wheel of Fortune, and you'll still get a boatload of value by having this commander in your roster. What I feel very, very inclined to call to your attention, however, is that by the time your kingdom gets to about 200 or even just 177 days of age, um, you're going to see multiple counters appear in the game in the form of Saladin and Alexander the Great. And then, much, much later, about 430 days into the action, you'll see Ramses appear, which is the hard counter, which really marks the end of healing's reign and its effectiveness on the battlefield in Rise of Kingdoms, because it is just so significant how much it does hinder Richard I. In terms of the order that you invest in skills on Richard I, if you can swing it, I really would max the first and second skill before you take him to three and four stars. Um, these two skills are by far the most important on Richard I, and if you can swing it, uh, if you can swing it, maxing the first three skills will be very, very helpful. The fourth skill is barely going to be noticeable in its effectiveness, quite frankly, but those first three skills really do pack a lot of punch, particularly the first two. So, Try to max the first two before you start leveling them up. If needed, max the first three. But even if you had to use them as 5-1-1-1, one, 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 you'll get a lot of value out of that commander on the battlefield. 
and in particular in Canyon. Now, when it comes to pairing for Richard I, I think there's going to be some really obvious pairs. These have been true for a very long time. One of them is Charles Martel. I still pair Richard I with Charles Martel in Canyon right now, over 500 plus days into Rise of Kingdoms. Yes, I still use him there. So I think he is very powerful in that configuration, and I would highly recommend it. My recommendation will be to use Richard as the primary so that he can heal, increase the number of troops that are in the march so that the uh, shield by Charles Martel is boosted and is more effective in shields for a slightly higher value. It's a micro-optimization, but you know I like to hunt for those wherever I can find them. In terms of other infantry commanders to pair with, I personally find a lot of enjoyment with Alexander the Great and Richard I as a pair. If you want to be more tanky, use Richard primary. If you want to be more aggressive and do more damage, then use Alexander the Great as the primary. Alex brings a lot of march speed, which Richard really, really desperately needed. Continuing down the list for pairings you could look at, I've played around a little bit with Guan primary and Richard secondary. I wasn't all that impressed. I used it at the Ancient Ruins for a fair amount of sustain. Again, it was fine, but not out of this world. Continuing through the list, I do think Constantine primary with, with Richard the first secondary is a great way to have a super tanky march. You're really not going to hurt other people very much, but you will provide a lot of buffing to nearby friendly units as you're running around the battlefield, spamming the active skill due to the effectiveness of Rejuvenate, which gives you 150 rage every time the active skill is used for both the primary and secondary commander. You'll have nearly 100% uptime on the damage debuff from Richard I, as well as the attack debuff of Constantine, and yes, those do stack. Continuing through the list of infantry commanders, I think that is the best set of pairings that you could do. Um, at, at the legendary tier, there are some unconventional pairings that you could try to do, but I just wouldn't necessarily recommend. Some of those unconventional pairings are double C with Richard I. You use double C as the primary, run around killing gatherers. You could do that nearly infin infinitely with all that healing from Richard I. Um, you could pair Saladin and uh, Richard I, you get a lot of healing. There's some anti-synergy because Saladin wants cavalry, but if you only have the first two skills maxed on Richard, it's kind of an interesting idea. In a similar vein, you could do Freddy or Caesar. I would prefer that Freddy get a Rage Engine, which really you're not getting from Richard I, but you would have a very large march with a high amount of sustain from the healing also on Freddy. In a similar vein, Julius is extremely tanky. A Julius Richard March is going to be outrageously tanky, but not do a ton of damage out. Uh, you could pair with Mehmed for, again, having a lot of sustain with the AoE from Mehmed, the additional troops. You could use this in the open field, but you'd be lacking March speed. I really wouldn't recommend it. For a garrison context, if you are defending a garrison, I'll say that Richard I and Wu Zetian in a Ark of Osiris match is going to be really phenomenal. Wu Zetian, Richard I will be great there. Um, using Richard I with Esong is also a fine choice in that game mode. I wouldn't defend a flag, however, with Richard I and Esong. You really don't want that healing effect. You want something that instead does boatloads of damage or shielding. Um, healing you can is an effect you can really get other ways. Now at the epic tier, you've got a few choices here. Sun Tzu and Richard are phenomenal together. Even though Richard doesn't benefit from the boost to damage over here, that really doesn't matter. Um, they're just so gosh darn good because Sun Tzu generates rage. He reduces the damage you take. He increases your health, which we know now to be one of the best stats in the game. I mean, this is just a phenomenal combination. 10 out of 10 would recommend. And again, if I haven't already shared the card for health being the best stat in the game, card up in the top, you're going to want to watch that. You could pair with CPO for an ultra tanky march, but you're going to be missing march speed, which I really don't like. If you pair with Joan of Arc, I did a bunch of testing here. It turns out Richard primary is more effective, but he'll also be quite good as a secondary to Joan of Arc if you wanted to pair them. Pairing with Boudicca is also a mighty fine choice. She'll benefit in part from the boost to healing from Richard I, which is quite nice, and she does restore rage, which is something that Richard really wanted. They will, however, lack in march speed. Olji Mundok is an exceptional pair. He is going to do a lot of things that you really wanted, giving a huge amount of infantry stats, reducing the defense of the target. 
I like the two as a pairing, and I would recommend them. If you are battling Barbarians, Lohar and Richard I are extremely tanky. That is a march that can go nearly infinite battling barbs. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Overall, Richard I is a commander whose value will diminish over time as more and more commanders come into the game. Now, this is true of every commander. The extent to which they're the best and the volume of things they're the best at is only going to decrease as more commanders get added into the game and more commanders arrive that are specialized for different activities, such as, just an example, uh, the entrance of Yi Sun Shin and Theodora for what likely will be city defense commanders. There are fewer and fewer situations where, like, any individual commander will really shine. However, I will make the argument for all of the reasons we've already shared that the rate with which Richard loses value over time is going to be greater than a lot of the other commanders simply because of all the counters to healing. Hopefully you find this guide helpful. If you did, drop a like on the video and consider subscribing to the channel for more commander guides. We'll put a card up in the top for our commander playlist so you can go check out more Commander Gynes. Until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom.